Alright guys, I'm going to start the process of inspecting the water holding tanks. I only have the fresh and the gray water. I threw the black water out because honestly when I took it out of the trailer, it was half full of crap, literally. And honestly I just didn't want to, I didn't, like I didn't have anywhere to dump it, so I just threw it away. And honestly that's just really gross, you know, why would you want to keep that? Plus, we're not going to be needing a black water tank because we're going to go with a composting toilet. So I'm going to inspect both the fresh and the gray water tank, make sure that there's no cracks, no leaking going on. Um, if there is, I can fix them. Um, I have, did find a replacement for the fresh water tank if I need to, but I think it's like 250 to 300 bucks plus the same amount in shipping. So it's going to be like 500 bucks to replace that so i'm really hoping i don't need to replace that um lacy is like keeps telling me that we just need to replace it because it's gross but i'm like listen it's going to be bleached it's going to be clean and we're not going to drink straight out of it drinking cooking water is going to go through a filter you know i'm not too worried about that that's the plan anyway i'm going to expect these tanks and see see how they go see how they are All right guys, so here's the fresh water tank. Here's all the, this is the inlet. This is the, this is a drain. And then this is what connects to the water pump. So I just took the inlet pipe out and saw that this mount flange is cracked. So that's lovely. But I think from what it looks like, you might be able to just, you might be able to just buy that piece and glue a new one in. So hopefully that's the case. That was in fact, not the case and i since learned that this is called a spin weld fitting and it was not easily replaceable <sighs> okay so i'm giving up on these tanks for now aside from that flange on the outside i it's not leaking at all that's all good but on the inside see if i can show you there's like a orange residue dirt or rust or i don't know what it is and i'm not really sure how i'm supposed to clean that out now i bleached it a little bit put a little tiny bit of bleach in the water and just kind of swished it all around in there which you know would kill bacteria and stuff like that but still i don't know it's a little disconcerting to me to have an orange residue um <laughs> sitting on the bottom of your freshwater tank it doesn't seem very fresh you know what i mean I'm gonna go research and see if there's anything I can do to actually clean it out because obviously I can't get in there and scrub it. But if I if there's some kind of tool that can you know blast high pressure water in there to kind of clean it all out and scrub it, if you will, I don't know. And then the gray water tank has a bunch of nastiness in it, and I'm pretty sure it's shit. Probably got backwashed up from the black tank. Don't know if it's mud or not, but. Again, not sure how I'm supposed to scrub that out. So yeah, I've got to figure out a way to scrub these out and figure all that out. Uh. All right, so I've had a heck of a couple days trying to figure things out. Came down today um, after a morning of scrambling and trying to find the right pipe fittings and finally did. Um, but I forgot all my camera gear, so I'm filming on my phone right now, so please forgive the lack of quality. I did want to show you guys what I'm doing with the freshwater tank. Basically, I have the original tank here. I believe it's the original. It was at least the one that was in it when I purchased the Airstream. So this was the whole fitting here that I had to go purchase. Now, I purchased one off of vintage trailer supply and the problem I had with it is that I measured this and I'll show you guys a picture of the measurements here but I measured the spin weld fitting that is on the tank itself and from thread to thread on the inside it measured an inch and a half so I naturally assumed that hey you know this fitting must require an inch and a half fitting 
to go on. So I ordered from Vintage Show Supply, they had a half inch MPT, which is the threaded part, to a half inch barb. And that's the part that the hose slides onto. And then I also ordered this half inch hose, or sorry, a inch and a half. I keep saying half inch, but it's an inch and a half hose, inch and a half fitting, inch and a half barb fitting for that. Well, the inch and a half ended up being too big for this spin weld fitting on the tank. And so it ended up being an inch and a quarter. Uh, Vintage Trailer Supply, they were kind enough to refund me for that fitting that I bought um, since they didn't have an inch and a quarter, which is what I needed. So thank you, Vintage Trailer Supply. Apparently plumbing sizes are confusing and not straightforward. So what ended up happening is I, I went to the local pipe door and I had to buy this fitting here. And so this was pretty much the same as the one I had, except it was, it was an inch and a half barb for the hose. So it went to an inch female. And then inside there, I had to add an inch uh, nipple. So basically just a threaded pipe all the way through. And then this white piece here is a uh, inch and a quarter to an inch. So three different pieces just to get this 90 degree elbow on here and it's important to have this 90 degree elbow because it sits inside the tank right up against the frame and I'll show you guys later but you know that comes out and then it needs to go straight up and if you had it straight out and tried to put the hose this way it just wouldn't fit that ended up fitting and then you know this hose even though it's in these are both inch and a half the hose was very tight to get on there it actually you can i don't know if you can tell but the hose almost expands onto this fitting so i had to really just shove it on there and twist and turn and it i you know i only ended up getting it on three quarters of the way which i think is enough i put this pipe clamp on there to make sure it was nice and secure and tight and i tested it by pouring water through it and it didn't leak at all through this and all the water came out there and the other thing that you can see is this blue putty goop so someone had done repairs to this tank at some point you can see the leftover epoxy that was left on there originally this whole area was covered in this black epoxy so basically there was a crack in this spin weld fitting so i got this plastic weld from jb weld and it's this special putty that you mix together and you put up there it's supposed to harden and bond to the plastic so I stuck this fitting in and then I squished all that putty on there and I'll make sure to test it and hopefully I don't get any leaks because I just need to get this tank in and be done with this. I'm adding electric tank heaters to both the freshwater and the gray water tank. So basically it's just this pad um, and it has a thermostat built inside and you just hook it up to grounded power. And it automatically kicks on at, I believe, somewhere around 50 degrees or 45 degrees, somewhere around there, right? And then it heats it back up to like around 60, 65 degrees, something like that. I can't remember. Just keeps your water from freezing, right? All right, so there's the heating pad. You just peel off the paper on the back side and stick it on there. I don't know, hopefully, I don't know how it could prevent like water over there from freezing, but hopefully. So I went with the sea level two tank monitoring system. Got the one with the water pump switch on it and it's got battery monitor, fresh water, gray water, black water, which I won't need, and an LPG monitor. So I'll be able to hook up all of that and then basically will just tell me the percentage that I have left in each of my tanks. So I got both of this, the tank monitor system and the tank heater pads from RVUpgrades.com. Just so you know, if you're looking where to find them. They got these new circuit board tank monitors, which are really awesome. You just stick them to the outside of the tank. So here's the old sensors right here, right? And these are actually spin weld fitted into the tank and they go inside the tank. And a big problem that I was seeing online with these is that, you know, most RV owners will know is that you have to make sure to keep those clean. Now on a freshwater tank, I imagine that's probably not as big of a deal and probably not on a gray water tank. It's more of a big deal on a black water tank, you know, where you're getting a lot of uh, nasty stuff in there and the, the sensors would get dirty and then they would stop actually working well. So these ones, they go on the outside 
of the tank and you just cut them to the correct size that you need and then you don't have to worry about them being on the inside of the tank so originally the tank the fresh tank sat on a layer of about a, an inch of styrofoam that was inside the tank pan i don't want to use styrofoam or anything chemical or synthetic like that so i've got plenty of extra insulation from uh, the hemp insulation that we're putting in the floor and the walls so the one i have now is the five inch five and a half inch thick ones i'm just going to go ahead and just use that and i'm just going to tear it up and create a layer on the bottom and then get the tank pan in there where i want it and then kind of fill in the sides that are left over so that's what i'm doing i'm just going to tear this up rip it apart create a nice layer of insulation basically just some padding for it to stand on or sit on you know it's not going to be a super good amount of insulation but it'll be some and then also just some padding to kind of protect the tank from being banged around and in the metal and stuff like that all right, so here we are installing the gray tank pan. I put uh, bottle tape around the edges of the pan to keep any excess water out, just give it a little gasket sealer. To install it, it took two of us to help lift it up and kind of work it into the right spot. And we used plywood blocks to kind of stack and hold it up for us. Most of the bolts that uh, were originally holding it in broken off inside the frame. So I used quarter inch self-tapping screws to mount it this time drilling new holes and snugging it up to the frame. It was a lot of work and it caused a lot of shoulder pain doing it this way, but I got it done. And as you can see here, I'm very happy it's done. Now that we got the tank pan in, I'm gonna go ahead and put the gray tank in here, build out the drain pipe plumbing to exactly where it needs to be. I put a layer of insulation under there. So I wanted to get it in here and make sure that my tank is level on the top because the bottom of the tank is sloped toward the drain. So I, what I don't want to do is have more insulation near the drain that actually lifts it up and then kind of levels the bottom of the tank out. I want to make sure that I keep an even slope. Just want to make sure that I don't prop it back up the wrong way and then, you know, it doesn't drain properly. So. Boom, all right, tank fits in there nicely. Pretty level, if anything, it's definitely sloped. The last thing I wanna do is put the tank sensor on. So I got the new circuit board sensors that just stick to the outside. I'm gonna put it right here, just because it says you wanna keep it kind of like, you don't wanna have it here where it's butted up against metal. I guess I can kind of interfere with it working properly. So I'm just gonna, Clean this off with a little mineral spirits. These things come, I think, I think they're like 12 inches long, a foot, and they give you cut points so you can cut it to the right length. So I had to cut three off for the gray tank. I cut two off for the fresh tank. And then also for the gray tank, I didn't realize this, but all the sensors get wired together in a single circuit. And then on the circuit board here, they have you these tabs that you cut off depending on what ta uh, tank you're using. So the freshwater tank, you don't cut off anything. And then on the gray water tank, there's this little GRY tab. So I cut that off and then that'll tell the main unit that this signal is the gray tank. I want to put it on there. Said like a quarter of an inch from top and the bottom. So that's it, I got the pipe in there, the drain pipe for the gray tank here. I put Trim Pro 365 just around in the inside of this to keep it from leaking. I just, I did it without it, just with the pipe clamp and there was a little bit of a drip leak underneath here. So just went ahead and sealed it up, make sure that nothing leaks at all into the subfloor. Drain pipe goes there, got the Valterra cap on it. <sighs> That comes off, and then my when I go to drain, my hose will hook on here just like that. And then for the holes, I just took a piece of aluminum, cut out a shape for the pipe to come out, and 
this just fills in that hole and then this was the old slot hole for valve handle for the black tank and here's the valve handle for the gray tank and what I did is I just got this piece of rubber, it's like a rubber washer or grommet or something from Home Depot. Uh, like a six by six inch square of rubber. And I just cut a hole in it. And that way it's a little more flexible. It moves around, but it still keeps this hole sealed up and then kind of around the pipe as well. Yeah, I also, I ran my water line across there. I have a hole in the subfloor where that's going to come up. My water pump and everything will be on that side. That's the side that the kitchen and the bathroom are on. So I just ran that, so then my water pump will connect to that line, suck all the water out of the tank. This is my air vent for filling, and this is my fill hose. And I got all my wires here for my heating pad and my tank sensor, so I'm gonna run all that stuff up. So yeah, that's just a quick video about what I'm doing with the tanks and how to get those back in there. So that's it, I gotta go. And see you in the next video.